Good afternoon, everybody. I thought there was more than one of you in here. Questions? Uh, Mick, now that you've had a chance to assess the players uh, after Gibraltar, are there any injury knocks? And Shane Duffy didn't seem to train for the bit that we were allowed to oh, see. Dear, uh, Shane's got a sore ankle, so we've just left him out today. Uh, he's going to have a scan, see if there's anything serious. I don't, I don't think there is. I'm hopeful he'll be okay, but he might not be. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember you were speaking in ahead of the Gibraltar game about the power of having the underdog tag. I think that Georgia will probably have it, given seeding and, and world ranking uh, tomorrow night. Does that make it more difficult for Ireland? I don't think so. I, I don't subscribe to the theory, despite of the... Uh, I've seen them play on a very good side. Uh, although they were beaten 2-0 by Switzerland, Switzerland were just better than them. Um, had a very, very good side, Switzerland. Um, no, I don't think it makes it any harder. I just think it's a tough task, but we're at home. We've got to take all our advantages that we've got. See if we get the crowd behind us by starting well, and we'll see where that takes us. Yeah, there are reports in today's paper that fans are planning some kind of protest against uh, the FAI's executive vice president and the governance of the association in general. Um, <laughs> That's going to be a hell of a title for his door, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, we should have some wide door. Uh, so. <laughs> but if there, I mean, there's something in the paper in the Times Ireland today about them throwing tennis balls onto the pitch. I mean, is that a distraction for the players and for you? Well, do you know, if, if that's the case, I th I've, I've been at games, I've been at Charlton when people have done it. And uh, it's not going to help us play any better, that's for sure. So I hope that's not the case. I think they try and overlook that. They're coming to watch a football match uh, and they want us to win and giving us the best chance and that's getting behind us and not having any outside influences affecting that. But I, <laughs> I can't do anything about it to do. Maybe I'll take a tennis racket with me. Uh, yeah, so I guess just... Uh, for them to get behind the team and park all that for another time. Look, our fans, uh, and I'm not just saying it now because I'm back in the job. I was in the job before. They're the best fans. They're fabulous. So I, I just like them to come and support the team. And if they have to demonstrate about anything, do it somewhere else and at another time because we don't want it to affect the performance. None of it's affecting the preparation, by the way. Mick, I can understand that you don't want the. the protest to affect your team's performance, but can you maybe understand the frustrations right, of fans? Can I just say something? Unless it's guaranteed that there is going to be one, I'm not going to talk about it anymore because we're talking about hypothetical, aren't we? So we can say, what am I going to say if we win, lose, or draw? That's all hypothetical until it happens. So I'm not going to talk about it again. And if, if it's brought up, I'm just going to blank it. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I'm not on the protest, but just can you understand supporter frustration with what's been going on for the last week or so? Well, as I said, I just said, I, we've come in to play a game and that's my, that's my issue. I can't, I, outside influences, when I don't get involved with things I can't affect, and this is one of them. The only thing I can affect is our preparation for the game. And we, we try and make sure that that's, we pin everything down and nail it down and making sure it's right. And then we get a good performance. And if we do, I think people will think a lot happier about us and a lot better things about us and have a better feeling about the team. And that's all I want. And that's, you know, I've been in, I've been in when we've had a great feeling in, in 88 and 90 and 94 and 2002 when the, the mood is great, when the fans are all behind us. And I think that's my job to try and get that back, and that's all I can influence. Just on Georgia tomorrow, um, like for the first half against Switzerland, they did frustrate them, and I suppose sat deep for a lot of the game. Um, and I suppose in a similar way, Gibraltar did to Ireland on on Saturday as well. Do you think you have players in your squad that are, that are capable tomorrow night of unlocking that and breaking that down? Well, I've just I've just spoke to them after training. I've just watched our training session again, and all the last ten months. The amount of time we've been in, how long it seems longer. Uh, I think we've got real quality in the team, yeah. I think there's too much negativity about that and that we can score. Jeff, Jeff Hendricks has scored, was it what he won in 50 odd? Well, he's, 
back on the goal scoring trail. Let's hope we can get somebody else on it. And just, you did say after the game that you didn't think the, the idea of having Darty and Coleman on that same side, you didn't think it worked. Does that mean that's finished now as an experiment or do you think you need to give it another go? You'll be at the game, won't you? You get the team an hour before kick-off. Um, it didn't work on the night. I said before, I may have to use it sometime else, who knows when, but it didn't particularly work against Gibraltar. Um, in terms of return to Dublin, how much are you looking forward to managing an Irish side uh, in Dublin again? Uh, very excited about it, yes. Uh, it's as much pleasure or as made me feel as proud as ever. And I did it before. I used to walk up the steps at Lansdowne Road and stand and listen to the national anthem. In fact, the national anthem was only one of the things that I enjoyed on Saturday. Probably that. The standing there, being the manager, the national anthem, the goal, the final whistle. That was about it. Uh, so, yes, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited and looking forward to it. And in both your playing days in green and in your previous management spell with Ireland, home games were massive. So is tomorrow a must win with only four games being played in Dublin over the course of the campaign? You know, if we lost tomorrow and won all the others, it wouldn't really matter, would it? But we're not thinking about that. But it's, it's, that's always a, you know, must win. That's a great headline, isn't it? I think I have to get as many points possible to qualify so we can have our games here and we can be involved. How we get them is irrelevant to me, but a good performance and a good win would make us all feel better. But in terms of games you will target as you look ahead, are the home games more likely to be games that you pick up points in or do you feel, does it matter whether you're playing Dublin or whether you're playing in Geneva or wherever you might be playing? I haven't been, I haven't been at a club or with, with Ireland or anywhere else when I played or managed that home games weren't very important. So this is an important one for us. Thanks, Mick. Pleasure. Mick, <coughs> sorry, over here. Um, you spoke, you, how you, doing? you spoke last week about having an idea of the, of the team in your head, but you wanted to see the players on the training pitch. And then by seeing them on the training pitch, they told you that what you were thinking was, was right. Um, was it another learning process seeing the players on the pitch in the competitive fixture? in terms of your your thought process, looking ahead to what you were thinking about Georgia and now where you're at now? No. Just no, it wasn't. It was a long question, a short answer. But yeah. ab absolutely not, no. I was uh, I had two trains of thought in my mind for the two games. So the, the game on Saturday didn't... No, I didn't have a bear on it at all. And I'm not going to judge those players on that. That pitch, that wind, that, those circumstances, I'm not judging them on that, no, not at all. And then just looking ahead to the game, um, I, I, I assume you've looked back at the two Georgia games from the last, um, the last campaign. Do you think... I have. Do you think um, when Georgia played well, um, do you think there was a certain element that Ireland allowed them to play well? Um, gave them maybe a bit too much time on the ball? Uh, Different set of circumstances, it's my team tomorrow that's going out, so uh, I'm not going to comment on what I thought happened before, uh, but if we allow Georgia to just settle and have the possession of the ball, which uh, they're very good at, and I'm watching Switzerland last night, they didn't allow them to do it, but Switzerland are the best, arguably the best team in the group. Uh, and they just looked at it, they were, they were a very, very good performance by them, and they dominated the ball which was unusual because Georgia tried to do that. Thank you. Hi, Mick. Uh, Richard Barrett, Executive Vice, Vice President of Funded Arena. Where are we looking at? Just trying to lighten the mood, but um, it's been 20 games. Well, have you, uh, are, are, you, are you getting a wide door as well, are you? <laughs> um, it's I been just 20 prefer a manager or coach on my door. It's, I can just slide in. It's no bother at all. It's been 20 games since we scored two or more than two goals. Is that a worry for you? Is Does the pressure increase with every game? I know a lot of that, 99% of it, you weren't there for, but how much pressure is there with us not scoring? What, what has happened in the past doesn't increase any pressure on me at all. It's, uh, I've started with a 
pretty ordinary performance and got three points, the same three points as it would have been if we'd have played brilliant and won by more goals. Yeah, the, the, the history of it doesn't bother me. We've tried and I said to you, I don't know if you were around when I talked about it before, so we tried to get Jeff scoring goals, but from midfield players scoring goals. So we've got one. So we've had a little improvement. And if we can get another little improvement on Tuesday night, then I'll be pleased. But commenting on what happened before and 20 games before, it's had nothing to do with me. You know, so I'm OK. I'm, there's no more pressure on me than having to stand in front of 45,000 people who have got great goodwill towards me and all expecting good things from us all. There's enough pressure. I don't let other things affect me. And on Sean Maguire, we know he said before in the past that two games in such a short period, it's quite difficult for him at this stage of his hamstring. Does he have a good chance of starting? or? It's not always good, is it, when you tell the manager, I can't play two games in three days. It's a good start for him. He hasn't said that to me. And I know he's been, he's been available for Preston now for a while. So, yeah, he's in the squad and he's... He's in my thoughts. Two more minutes before the embargo goes to police. Big um, fan protests, I know fan protests, it's been a while since the atmosphere has been the stadium, what's like it was when you were manage, manager previously. What do your team need to do to sort of get the Aviva Stadium back rocking like it was when you were manager previously? I guess uh, uh, a fast, uh, attacking, aggressive Irish performance that I think that we all appreciate. Not going to be easy because they'll be difficult to play against. Um, but outside all of that, I'll still take a win, however it comes. That's my intention of how to play. Let's see if that bears fruit. But let's hope we win because the the object for me with seven games to go is to qualify for the Euros. Yes, of course. Yeah. And just on Shane, obviously coming for Sky today, would you happen to leave that until as late as possible before making a final call on him? Yeah, I saw him at breakfast and he's a big tough fella, isn't he? And he said he's gonna be fine, but you know, I've said that myself in the past and it don't don't always turn out to be that way. We'll see. Let's see. I d I don't think there's there's nothing Scan is a precaution, let me just clear that up. Uh and he's very hopeful he'll be okay. So, let's hope he is. But if he's not, then I've got other options. Any last question before embargo? Okay, from here on, 6 a.m. embargo in the morning, mate.